If g of x is the transformation of f of x is equal to x after a vertical compression by one third, a shift left by one, and a shift up by three, letter A, write an equation for g of x. Okie dokie. Gotta love these problems, right? So first thing is we're gonna look at the original function that they're telling us that we have to perform some transformations on. So the original function is f of x is equal to x. You know how I feel about this notation. Simply write it as y y is equal to x. Now this all of a sudden looks more familiar. So we draw a set of axes and we're going to draw in the equation y is equal to x. This is probably a good one to more or less memorize. It's just a basic diagonal line that passes through the origin and the diagonal basically has a 45 degree angle. Okay. All in reference to the x and y axes. So now what we got to do is we got to take this line and do three things to it vertically compress it by one third. We then have to shift it left by one and shift it up by three. So let's look at each one individually. A vertical compression of this line would be, would look something like this, where I were to take it and essentially it's actually like a rotation. Okay. So what I'm going to do, oh, that's actually better. Let me do it this way. One second. So it's actually like a rotation of this around the center point. So if I were to resize this, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate this. That's basically like a vertical compression. Notice how the vertical coordinates are becoming squished, right? So they're being squished by how much? Well, by a factor of one third. Now think about this for a second. If you know the slope of the original red line, which I'll actually draw in blue now, just to differentiate the two. So let's pretend that this was the original. Okay. If you knew that the original slope of this line was one, how do we know that? Well, what's the coefficient in front of X? It's one, right? So the question then is, if I had to essentially rotate the blue line to make it now look like the red line, how much is the slope decreasing to? It's decreasing to one third of the original value because we're compressing it by one third. So that means that the slope here of this new line is going to be one third of one because that was the original slope, right? If this were two, then it would have been one third of two, et cetera, et cetera. So this works out to be one third. So now I know that this new line that I drew has now a slope of one third. So in other words, this new equation should look like this one third X plus now something, right? It's plus something. We don't necessarily know what that something is at the moment. Also, well, actually, if it, if it doesn't move anywhere, the something is zero. Okay. But don't forget, that's not the only thing we need to do to this line. We also got to shift it left by one and up by three. So watch what's going to happen. So let me just erase this. The line will now get shifted to the left by one. So watch, get shifted to the left by one, and then it's going to, and then it's going to go up by three. So somewhere here. So this is the new equation. This is the new line. And the, the equation we got to find for this is in the form MX plus B, right? We got to figure that out. What we figured out already is we know the slope, but we don't know this particular y-intercept here, right? We don't know what this y-intercept is. We do know it's positive though, but we don't know what it is. So how do we find it? Simply by applying this particular formula I'm going to give you. It's not going to be found in the textbook, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. So basically what we can do is we can take the vertical compression factor, multiply it then by x plus now the shift to the right. If the problem was, and I did a problem just before, if the problem was instead of shifting to left by one, instead of was shifting, oops, I put a little R down there. I meant to write left L. Um, if it was shifting to the right, all that would have changed here would have been the sign. Okay. That would have been negative then shift to the right. So it's kind of counterintuitive to what you might think. You might think, well, shifting to left isn't to the left on the graph negative. Yes, it is. But the way the math works, it's going to be opposite. Okay. To how we might naturally think. So um, anytime you have a shift to the left, it's always going to be plus. And then the shift up and down will come outside, all right, of the uh, brackets there. And this is going to be a positive shift up. So this is shift up. So this is what we would expect. We know going upward on a graph is positive y, going down is negative y. And that's going to follow suit, okay? If this said shift down by three, then this would have been minus the shift down, meaning a minus three, all right? Now literally watch, all you got to do is plug it in. So the vertical compression is one third. X plus then the shift to the left was one, 
plus then the shift up was three, and this is it. This is actually your equation now. I know that looks funky, but that's because it's not perfectly in this form y equals mx plus b. But watch what we can do. Can we just do some simplifications to get it into that form? Sure we can, right? We can take the one third here and distribute it over each term. When we do that, we're going to get then one third x plus one third, then plus the three. Don't forget about that. And now what do we got? Now we can combine our like terms and now look at the form here. Look at how beautiful this is. One third x plus then one third plus three is basically three and a third, right? So you can leave it as three and a third. You can convert this into an improper fraction. It doesn't really matter, which would then be what? It would be 10 over three. Or you can write this as a decimal. It could be 3.3 repeating. It doesn't matter to me what you do. I'm gonna use the decimal. People like decimals more than fractions. So 3.3 repeating. Now, this is the equation of the line. We got the y uh, intercept and we got our slope. So notice, what's the, the y-intercept value is positive. Didn't we say over here on the graph that should be positive? See how beautifully that works? So that's the equation, all right? So why don't we now erase and let's move on, all right? How are your courses going this semester? I hope they're going well. I hope it's not too crazy for you, all right? You know, as life progresses, Things generally get busier and busier and busier. Stuff gets harder and harder and harder. And uh, we have time for nothing else. So uh, if you're not fully depressed at this point, keep watching. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just get back to the problem. So letter B, it says, what is the slope of this line? Well, we already figured that out, right? One third. So that's easy. Letter C, what's the y-intercept? Oh my goodness. Positive 3.3, repeating. And that's it. That's it. All done. All right. So guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please help us out by hitting that subscribe button and the like button. And um, also, if we were able to help you out, we might be able to help some of your classmates out. You know, send them our way here. Tell them about our videos. We appreciate it very, very much. And I truly do hope you have a great day. Bye.